Iztaccíhuatl era una princesa que se enamoró de Popocatépetl, un guerrero del imperio de su padre, que fue enviado a la guerra con la promesa de que si salía victorioso, se podría casar con el amor de su vida. Al regresar de la batalla, el joven supo que la princesa había muerto. Decidió entonces llevar el cuerpo de su amada a los montes y suplicar por ella. Los dioses decidieron convertirlos en volcanes para inmortalizar su amor. Iztaccíhuatl, vestida de blanco, puede estar dormida, pero nos invita a soñar despiertos. We, me, and right oh, fuck, hold on. I guess so we. But it's easier, I okay. can say you. Where are you right now? <laughs> I am in Omeka, Mecca, just outside, or, yeah, just outside of Mexico City. Um, fuck, hold on. <laughs> This is just I'm Laura Cortez, and I run for the North Face and their Athlete Development Program. We're in Mexico right now, working to establish a city to summit FKT that starts in the city of Omeka, Mecca, and summits east of the local volcano that sits at 17,000 feet. My dad's family is from Omeka, Mecca, and growing up, we always hear stories about how they'd always come back and visit that part of the family and how it was just very outdoorsy and there was tons of nature and about these two specific volcanoes that they would see all the time. But that was kind of the extent of what I really knew about it. What do you think of that, Laura? It's pretty neat. <sighs> When my dad passed away last year, I had a bit of an identity crisis, realizing I had a lot of unanswered questions about our family history and his side specifically. My dad having both perspectives of having an immigrant mother and also a US born dad, I think gave him insight into how things work on both sides. I think that He, to some extent, did miss out on fully being able to embrace the duality that he held. And for me, being able to have the privilege of doing this project and seeing it through in a way that I have decided to, I wish that's something he could have experienced for himself. I've been to Mexico now three times over the past three months, and it's also been my first time. So it's been really cool to soak everything in. There's so many things here that feel very natural. The community there is just really special, I think, and it's definitely one of people who just give and give and give, and I feel like that's what I found, I think the most relatable. Coming here and talking to just the people at the market we were at earlier and having them be so excited and taking pictures with me and wanting to, that was very like surreal. Um, and yeah, it's just very like humbling, I think, in a way that I just didn't expect to feel. They are saying that they trust you're gonna make it tomorrow and congratulations for the epic challenge. When I was planning this project for Mexico, one of the things I wanted to keep in mind was being really respectful of the history of volcanoes in the land. And I was reading about how a lot of people got blessings from shamans for a safe passage. 
I really wanted that, but wasn't sure of where to find that or what that process really looked like. And I think that's kind of what this whole project has been, just this series of really like serendipitous and very fortunate things that have aligned really well. And after one of our scouting days, we were walking around to Mecca Mecca and just kind of ran into one of the shamans there who was able to provide a blessing and some little items for me to bring up to help ensure a safe passage. When I started the run, we decided that being able to provide some kind of offering to Easter would be one, just like really kind, and two, I think just like really kind of put everything that I've learned quickly over the last few days into action, and just another way to again ask for a safe passage. Thank you, okay. We're gonna go. It was really great to be able to bring flowers to kind of essentially the base of her. And to be able to put them there. And I think for me, it was a way of yeah, just asking for a safe passage, but then also like being there and also asking like my ancestors and family of like, hi, I'm here, like, sorry it kind of took so long, but like, kind of like watch me today. In Mexico, the connection to the nature and land seems a lot stronger than it is back home. People go out on these big adventures and a lot of the, the language around it is conquering a mountain. And in Mexico, that just really didn't seem to be the case. It seemed more of just sharing space with others outside and really being able to embrace how sacred these lands are and the volcanoes are and what like, it wasn't so much of what can you take away from the mountains or do to it but it was more of how do I show up as my best self here and do this respectfully and with kind of like, you know, like your ancestors in mind, the spirits in mind, like being very cognizant of the land you're on. The city to summit route had one real turn and I was thinking, there's no way I can miss this turn on the map. It looks so obvious. But then I got, I think maybe a little too distracted. And at about mile seven, seven and a half, I realized I completely missed my turn. And I thought about going back, then I looked at the map and saw that it should theoretically join within like a half mile. And then where I thought it was going to join, it ended up just clicking out entirely. And it was like a 50 foot drop to the bottom. Eventually found a safer way down the cliff. And I looked at the map again and realized I still had to get over one more ridge line. Then about 20 minutes later, I saw the crew and it was just so relieved and overwhelmed. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think I ever felt so much at once before in my life. By the time I actually got to the crew, we had to really quickly decide, are we gonna still try to summit? And if so, what does that look like? <laughs> Bien, bien. Oh. Yeah. 
but ultimately we made one more push to go, but the weather just turned so quickly and became really unsafe. So it was a big day and we kind of had to take it for what it was, but it was still a really good day. When we were hiking down, it was it was the longest three mile hike ever. But I don't know, I, I was processing a lot of it, but I think, I don't know, the first thoughts was like, I don't get to tell my dad about this. Being able to pour all those emotions into this whole training to try to sum up Itza was a really great way for me to be able to process everything and ultimately grieve. And at first it was a thing of me trying to find him constantly. And by the end of the whole training block and all the trips to Mexico, it became, he's been with me all along.